Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which is a special book for me because um, I have some um, of my own background to go with this particular book. Uh, it's called Injured Parties and it's solving the murder of Dr. Helen Davidson. And it's been written by uh, Monica Weller and comes to us from the History Press. Now, this is the book here. We'll have a look at it in a minute. I've given um, this title. I, I did discuss this with my wife, but I've been the prime writer of this book review. Elizabeth and I did talk about the book. Um, and Elizabeth knows the area as well as I do. Now, I've given the title of my review the following. Helen deserves some justice. An absorbing review of a wholly unsatisfactory murder investigation finally yielding a probable result. And I hedge my bets a little bit, obviously, with that. Let's have a look at the book, first of all. There it is, a paperback. It's in hardback as well, but there's the paperback version. Um, you can see the spine there. And then there's a little bit of blurb on the back um, about what Monica has done. The book itself has got a, a quite a useful little index at the back by page numbering. And then there are some appendices with some very interesting correspondence, which I shall come on to with the um, Metropolitan Police and Thames Valley and so forth, and more appendices there. There are in the book, the book is a, a book to read through in one go, which is what I did, but you've also got um, photographs, you've got a lot of photographs and there's a picture just in case, that, that, that is Helen Davidson there. I'll just show you Helen's photograph and that's her house in Amersham, Cheshire Boys and so forth, and then there are various other photographs there and that's the actual scene and so forth and you can see various other pieces of information there i don't want to spoil the book for you because i think you should read the book yourself it's an easy book to read that's the front page and then there's the content section and as i'm going to come on and tell you which bits tell you what and you must make your own minds up with some very useful acknowledgements this has been a very well researched and uh, documented book um, because um, Monica has gone into a great deal of detail about what is an unsolved murder. <clears throat> so what do we say? <clears throat> well, this. One of the most fascinating aspects of uh, criminological history is a sheer number of what are termed unsolved murders, and this is one of them. Uh, at least that's the official version, anyway. Um, the book is an excellent and detailed explanation of of the shocking death of uh, Dr. Helen Davidson. Now, it's been written and researched by Monica Weller over a seven-year period, um, so the book Injured Parties is an important contribution to the growing unsolved file of, <coughs> excuse me, of homicides, where the truth <coughs> will now never be fully known because of cover-ups. But as with all um, of these homicides, <clears throat> we have a good idea, of course, of the person responsible. Uh, and that's without conspiracy theory syndrome, as I call it, but uh, just good careful detection 50 years later. And it's clear who probably committed the murder from this book. Now, I'm saying that um, most people have a good idea of who's done what, uh, but there will always be various theories. And, of course, we, we do work in the criminal justice um, system, the process, of a standard of proof which is beyond reasonable doubt, which is why I've actually used the term um, <clears throat> probability, because I don't think, because there's a lack of DNA evidence and it's too late now, um, it would be much more difficult to actually identify who did it. Um, I'm thinking, obviously, of, of, of cases like the Hanratty case, where he said he didn't do it, it couldn't possibly have been him, and it was eventually, sadly for his family, who believed in all his lies, it was proven that, in fact, he did do it by DNA, years later. But you see the problems, and of course it does work the other way, people being accused when they haven't done it. Now, what makes Helen's story so fascinating for me is because it's the fact that I spent the first 20 years of my life living in Amersham, both Old Amersham and Top Amersham, or Amersham on the Hill as it's known. And I remember what happened quite vividly, um, even now, with all the rumours, the places and the closeness of the local communities of that time, which are quite fresh to me, because I know all of the roads. I was a paperboy and I 
um, went to school there, so I'm very familiar with what happened. Now, Monica has produced a first-class piece of legal research, in my view, which reads as a mix of intelligence reports, uh, witness statements, and serious applied criminology fit for purpose. Now, I say that because, obviously, I come from a military background, and I'm used to reading intelligence reports. I'm used to barrister at law, used to reading all sorts of witness statements from police officers and witnesses, and um, trying to work out what is actually important build up a picture of what has actually happened. Now, I found the conclusion uh, particularly revealing for the saddest of reasons. Um, and I feel now that Helen has some late justice, as we know, on a balance of probabilities, who killed her and why. At least that's the, the view that Monica's putting forward. Some people have taken issue with it even now. And obviously, I'm therefore saying that it's only a probability. But I think there's a lot of evidence now. I think for you to understand who did it, read the chapter entitled In the Frame, because I don't do spoilers, um, because you get your answer there if you weigh up the evidence as Monica has done and has produced. And of course, the, the important point is I, like many other people, know all the locations uh, that Monica refers to. And I remember the wood very vividly as it was then, and the roads then, and all the gossip even now when we and all the leading players are dead. Now, as a barrister at law, I never normally draw personal conclusions about individuals, but I'm going to make one exception here with the sadness I have for what happened to Helen, a particularly horrible um, way that she was uh, killed, and the aftermath in what was such a difficult era, era from today. Of course, there are a lot of people who knew her because she was a well-known local person. Um, it was a particularly nasty homicide as well, and there are no nice ones, but this was particularly gruesome in my view. Uh, it was frenzied, and particularly uh, weird, the way that she was actually um, killed. And the exhibits, um, I'm sorry, rather, the exhibits of, of what has happened, both the physical um, evidence and, of course, <coughs> the all of the, <coughs> excuse me, all of the surrounding um, information uh, when, once her body was discovered bear all the hallmarks of certainly what I would see as a relatively experienced criminal practitioner, although I don't do much of that now, um, as what I would describe as a twisted sexual crime at a time of a change in the law on homosexual um, activity and obviously reform a year later which has actually taken a further 35 years to become even partially uh, accepted in today's society. And that now includes um, the current um, views, which are very uh, heavily covered in the press, on transsexual people. And again, this book deals with that particular issue very importantly, because many people have not accepted and won't accept, or, or ever thought existed, either in 1966, uh, that people such as transsexual people who haven't worked out their sexuality um, actually existed, when in fact they do. Um, it wasn't a subject that was talked about, and I said the era then was very different from the way it is today. And of course I'm a relatively older man now, and, and I reflect back on what it was like then. Um, it's difficult probably for a lot of people in the modern age to understand that, but however. Now such matters are of course raised in the courts. <clears throat> and, of course, I've seen many cases. I've prosecuted and defended quite a large number of people over the years. Um, there's a tremendous reserve, of course, and there certainly was then, um, and very little reporting um, at the time about this type of offence and the type of people involved because of the subject matter. And I think that's an important thing to bear in mind because it was an eye-opener for me. I started reading law in 1970, and um, at that time, there were cha big changes taking place, but there was a very serious um, attitude by the state, which has ameliorated over the decades. But on what is the 100th anniversary of Helen's birth, and that's when I got the book, and I've been thinking about it for a few months now, um, we've come a long way quite quickly, in my view, on the issue of attitude. And that's one of the reasons why I welcome Monica's work, because... I think, like everybody, it's a long time ago 
<clears throat> but it is nice to know that at least someone looked at this case again as a cold case and come up with what I think is a very sensible possible solution that we'll never know the real result. However, one area remaining in urgent need of reform, of course, is policing itself. This is where I come onto my hobby horse, because Monica is even handed throughout her narrative, and not critical in the way others would be, about the, po the way the investigation was carried out, because I would use the word poor, which features, in my view, prominently for me, with the phrase cover-up, apparently concerning the, uh, the inquiry, um, both in my view, quite unacceptable approaches, even for the uh, couldn't care less um, attitude of the 1960s. And of course, the poor features of the where it was looked at and the cover up um, are, the, are the real problems. And if I could say today that that doesn't happen, I would be a really happy man. But it happens all the time. And one has to really be on top of the issues to make sure that you get the proper result. We do, I have to say, I think the police make the very best efforts they can within the resources. But if it could ever be of any comfort to Helen, uh, we might eventually get something positive from this and from what Monica has researched, and that is a uh, Royal Commission on Modern Policing for the 20th century uh, requirements that we have. It's long overdue. It's been called for by many people. I'm calling for it again in this review. Um, at some stage in this century we will get it because the type of crimes changed in many, many areas. The qualities that a police officer now needs are different. I come from uh, an intelligence and security background and I can see the huge changes that have taken place. And I do think that that is something that will be a requirement of once we get over Brexit, that is. But uh, that's another issue. Now, after 40 years then... Um, this book has come. We've had PACE, we've had the creation of the Crown Prosecution Service, we've had huge DNA uh, discoveries and uses and the profiling and so forth, um, but we've had repeated failures to discover things like unused, undisclosed material and reform of decisions to close or seal files allegedly to protect living people is another area I think that should be looked at. It's a legal fiction, if ever there was one, um, uh, to say that we, the public, who pay for what goes on, um, we have a right to know what's happening. And we don't have the right for people to just close files and seal and say, oh, you, you shouldn't know about that. Well, I think we should know about it, especially if wrongdoing has ca been carried out. And it would be very difficult in this case to to point the finger at anyone. But uh, you just have to read the book to realise that there's something went quite seriously wrong with the investigation from the, the guy leading the team who made a particular view about what, what had happened and didn't shift his opinion and basically didn't carry out a proper investigation. That's one of the worst things because I can remember the days becoming weeks and no one knew how Helen had been killed. And it's appalling even today to think that a policeman had just taken that decision. Oh, well, it was it, she. She fell upon two lovers, and that was it. And by the, or, or there could be some maniac out there. All of these things they weren't looked at with with a sufficient degree of intelligence, which is what we need. Now, alas, the problem, of course, goes further, because the negligent destruction of evidence, documentary or real, uh, which is actually apparent in this case remains I think a grave action for which there appears to be no justification because if it's a cold case where it's unsolved you shouldn't go around destroying the basic pieces of evidence unless there's some reason and I have to give an ulterior motive to that frankly because I cannot see a storage issue being the main argument at all. Now I bet the files have all now gone you see that's the problem. Um, why they have I don't know. Um, Monica makes some suggestions about a civvy just chucking them away and thinking, oh, there's stuff in that drawer, we don't need that, and throwing it out. That is not the way to deal with something like this when the state are meant to be trying to protect us. So Injured Parties as a book, I think, is a meticulous account of all involved in what happened to the central figure. It's the failures, the many unpleasant people involved, I'm afraid they are, uh, class, a lack of intelligence by people and organisations involved throughout, 
a sadness for the community who thought a maniac was on the loose when that was not the case. That was the, that was the view at the time. We thought, oh, it's going to be another one. It didn't happen. And the lack of humanity to the end, for the victim. That's what hurts more, I think, than anything else, because at the end of the day, it's now quite clear to me who probably did it. And there's nothing that can be done. You can't right the wrong and you can't deal with the person who probably perpetrated it. Someone did it. And that's the point with any crime. Someone's responsible. You can't just turn around and say, oh, it wasn't him. That's not good enough. And that's been always been the problem with any type of... We're not talking about law here. We're talking about the investigation itself. I think this story would make a good film um, because the events actually happened. <coughs> They're still... Um, the location is still there. And it does... I mean, Agatha Christie has been mentioned and various other things, but the bottom line on this is that um, this, this is the sort of story um, where I think probably in a few years' time you can start pointing fingers at the people concerned because it's, um, in its own way, it's very sad, but it's a, it's a very good example of the tremendous changes in attitude that we've had, specifically on uh, sexual issues, because I believe that this is probably what is behind um, the, the person who perpetrated this, and, of course, the attitudes of, of the state, uh, which were, were changing very dramatically in the mid to late 1960s. <clears throat> and as a per person at that time, I remember it, of course, very well. Let me conclude by saying this. I'd like to thank Monica very much for the seven years you've given to um, Helen for trying to sort this out. Um, please do keep safe the names of those who you have not named in your book uh, for the day that will come when we can be told and that the perpetrator finally, formally probably unmasked. Obviously the DNA has gone, the evidence is no longer there, but I think there is a foot, could be a formal unmasking of this person. Um, because that's always the beauty of history. And just remember that um, it's not um, a goodbye because you can revisit this at another day and we could have another look at this case and um, hopefully a bit of justice will come. This is the book. Uh, it's a sober ending uh, for my review. I don't, I don't normally do these reviews. I do professional reviews, but this is the book itself. And this is the back of it. And as I said, uh, from my point of view, I, f I felt very, um, very, I thought this was a very important um, book to review. Let me just show you that. That's, that's a particularly uh, sad picture. It was one that you can show. And then that is where Helen is um, located in Little Missenden. Um, I'd like to thank everybody concerned. Uh, this is an important book. And I'm particularly keen that Monica knows that there are other people who see what she's done um, as, I think, a very useful um, statement um, because it does actually give a sense to what happened at that time. So thank you to all. Bye-bye.